Hi, my name's Brady, and this is my video on our whole 2T growing. Some characters you will see in this video is Braden, the superintendent, and Elijah, our grounds crew employee. First off, I'll explain what got done to the T before we installed the irrigation. Then I'll explain how we made the T bigger while installing the irrigation at the same time. Then I'll explain how we got turf for the tea box as well. Alright then, it's time for the Grow In Section Part 3 video. In the late fall of 2016, the superintendent and general manager had started to build the tea box by building a mount of dirt and sand. They packed the dirt down before the winter so that we would have solid ground for the tea area so that the ground would settle over the winter. In the spring, the general manager put some leftover top dressing sand that had too much crack grass in it for us to use on our greens and he put it on the tea box for us to use later to mix in with some soil. We wanted to use lots of sand for this tea to hopefully prevent worms from taking over the tea box just like the old teas because worms don't like the sand due to the small rocks in the sand shredding the worm's skin. Something else that the general manager did was plant little shrubs on the left side of the tea box. Not to worry though, these shrubs should not interfere with your backswing. They only grow up to 4 to 5 feet tall, and we made the tee box high enough and far enough so we will not have to deal with this in our backswings in the future. Once that was all done, we decided to install the irrigation for the tee. What we decided to do is install the irrigation pipe for the sprinkler head on the left side of the tee beside the tee as if you were playing the hole. Why we chose to do it this way is seeing that we would have to fill in the trench, we could add more dirt to make the tee wider at the same time. Another reason we chose to do this is so we would not have to dig on the mount that had already been built, damaging the tee area that many hours of labor had built. Some advantages of having the irrigation installed on the left side of the tee is if we ever had a break, we would not have to dig it up in the middle of our tee, possibly getting rid of tee area for the golfers, affecting their view of the hole for them. And another good reason of us putting the sprinkler heads on the left side of the tee is most golfers shoot right-handed, making more space for tee shots and less chance of golfers taking a divot out of our sprinkler head. So, once we had all the irrigation installed, we started to dump soil, packing it down, and mixing it in with all the sand. We used our loader to move the soil for our tea box and we hand raked some of it by manpower. Then we used our tractor with the turf tires to pack the soil down. 
Having the turf tires on the tractor was nice because with the turf tires the soil wouldn't stick to the tires even if the soil was wet and in with the turf tires it made the top of the mountain nice and smooth. Using the tractor with the turf tires was really slick because one operator could pack the soil down while the other operator in the loader could bring more soil and drop it down for the other operator to pack down. Both operators working together in a perfect sequence can go a long ways. We packed it down everywhere on the T where we added more soil to make sure that the T has a solid mount with no sinkholes. Once we finished packing the soil down, we added more soil on the top of the T from the aeration we did in May on the top of the T box and planted seed. Then packed it down as well with our tractor with turf tires so it would be nice and smooth. Then our owner's landscaping company had a bunch of leftover sod from some houses they sodded. So we added another 15 feet onto the front of the tee box, making it even longer. When it came to putting the sod down, we had to do the same process of making the mount just like the back of the tee box. And of course we did not have to seed, instead we had the lay sod. Once we had the sod down, we fertilized the sod and even the grass we planted at the back got fertilized as well. And we watered it almost every day for 10 minutes. It also got fertilized the second time about three weeks later, giving us the nice quality turf you see here. In 2018, we started to get the tee ready for play for the golfers. The tee box did get top dressed with sand that we brushed into the lower spots of the tee box to make it smoother and more level. Unfortunately, I did not get any footage of doing this, but here's a video of what the top dresser looks like putting the sand down. Then once the turf had fully established and was level to the point we wanted, we had then started to cut it with the push mower. It had then got cut eight times in May by the push mower. We would lower the height of cut each time we cut the grass on the tee deck to see how it would take the cut. The tee deck also got watered every other day for 10 minutes depending on the weather of course. Now that it has been cut by the push mower, I am going to try cutting it with the ferry mower to see how the grass takes it from getting cut shorter. And so far it's not too bad, it's actually really good. So I'm going to continue cutting it with the ferry mower, the whole entire tee deck, to see how it takes. Once we had figured out that the ferry mower was cutting the tee deck alright, then we had started to cut it every other day with the ferry mower for the next two weeks. After cutting the tee deck for two weeks with the ferry mower, we decided to cut it with the tee mower. And when we cut it with the tee mower for the one week, we decided that the turf was lean, mean, and ready for golfers to hit off of.